Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're not going to look at any particular design pattern or at least I don't know the name of this pattern. We're just going to start nice and simple and we're not going to do any coding either in this tutorial but we're going to look at the concept of a front end and a back end. So in software, usually your software interacts with a user and if it doesn't it's probably going to have some kind of API some kind of interface that allows other people to use the code or it's going to have some code that interacts with something external to the program and we can think of that as being the front end front end so perhaps most often this is going to be code that in actually interacts with the user it's going to be a graphical user interface for example but it could be something else and not every program, not every piece of software has a front end, but perhaps the majority have a front end in some sense, even if the front end actually just interacts with other pieces of code. And the important thing is to separate that out from the back end. And the back end is stuff that doesn't interact with the user usually. Now, when you stretch your code in Java, assuming you're using Java, then you're probably going to have a particular package that contains the front end. So typically you'll, you'll create your package names in, in such a way that they are unique. And for example, I've got a website, caveofprogramming.com. So a tradition is to reverse your website URL. So I would say com.caveofprogramming. And then I'd have a package containing the particular application perhaps, for example, and then I'd have sub-packages and the, the, perhaps the next level of sub-packages would be the front end and then I'd have under, underneath that sub-packages and it's going to be the same with the back end, so the back end's probably going to have its own sort of high-level package and then it's going to have various sub-packages underneath that. Now in the next tutorial we're going to look at model view controller to see an example of how you can make this sort of hang together. But in general, generally speaking, the the front end is going to have to import back end packages because the front end uses the back end and you may have a controller in there so this is kind of a simplification but just broadly speaking front end imports back end stuff. Now the absolute golden rule here is that the back end the back end should never import front end stuff. So the back end never imports the front end stuff, never imports front end. And uh, I actually worked for the statistics company uh, doing a contract, SPSS, for a while. Or I was doing a contract for them. Technically, I wasn't working for them. But I sat in their offices, put it that way. And I, I actually, at one point, I somehow used, it, this is trickier than you think, I somehow used a front-end package in the back-end. God knows how I did it. I'm ashamed to admit it. Um, but if my, if my memory serves me well, I did somehow do it. And if you've got a lot of different packages in your front end, and some of them perhaps are not immediately obviously related to the front end, which is conceivable, then you could accidentally end up using them in the back end and then automatically importing them when you do, let's say, Control Shift O to organize imports in Eclipse. And they actually had some kind of system set up which scanned the back end stuff and checked that there were no front end import statements in it and I, I unfortunately their bill didn't work that day because I screwed it up so the absolute golden rule is never import front-end packages in your back-end and your back-end should be separately testable so the back-end here test it separately and you could write separately is that how you spell separately? Separ at LE. I think that's right. Anyway, yeah. So um, now, okay, so now you should test your back end separately because 
the front end, we all know that front ends have bugs in them. And let's say you use the front end of your internet banking site. You, you, you wouldn't be too surprised if there was a bug in it. If something went wrong with it, it crashed, your browser froze or something. It's not the end of the world. But you expect the back end that, that, that that front end is actually dealing with and actually using. You expect that to work flawlessly. If there's a bug in the back end of your banking, your internet banking software, then you, you're going to lose money or end up with some crazy amount of money or end up crazily in debt, probably more likely. So the back end um, should often, it's often thought of as something that's going to work. It's got to work flawlessly. It's got to be thoroughly tested. And you may often want to write JUnit tests, for example, to test the back end. And it, it lends itself to testing via JUnit because it's just code. There's no front end there. So test the back end very, very thoroughly. Make test it, test it separately to the front end. Usually you'll develop it first before you even start on the front end. And the idea is that you can use potentially even different front ends with the same back end. So the back end is a completely separate thing. It never imports front end packages. It's separately tested and it should work. It should be tested really thoroughly. Now the front end, of course you should test that. And the front end just uses the back end, kind of sits on top of the back end. But everyone knows that the front end may be prone to bugs. It's in the nature of front ends really. So you generally don't worry about that quite as much. Make sure that you get the back end right, and that's the most important thing. So that's it for this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we'll look at a kind of realization of this in Java code. And we'll look at model view controller. And I'm not sure if there's even going to be any code in that, but we'll probably at least create some packages in Eclipse. So that's it for this time. And until next time, happy coding.